Welcome to the Building Blocks of Bass. Uh, my name is Bob Dubu, really happy to be here today. Uh, today we're going to practice the, uh, just the first four measures of I Got Rhythm, but in this case it's the, uh, it's Olio from Miles Davis's great Relaxin' album. And the bass player that we're drawing our inspiration from today is the great Paul Chambers, uh, who we've studied here before, of course, um, and I'm, I'm, you're likely familiar with him. But uh, what we're going to do is just talk about really like pare everything down, get into what the rhythm changes are in the first four bars. Now, be before we get too far into it, and I know we're going to get some comments about this, there's so many different ways to play even these first four bars of rhythm changes. So I just want to set the standard right here. This is what we're focusing on today. Literally one, six, two, five, and then maybe a three, six, two, five. Right? So we've got, and that's if we're in the key of B flat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got one, six, two, five. Those would be the numbers associated with the key that we're in. Good? Right. So we're going to focus on this uh, today, just these first four bars, because there's a lot of different ways to do it. And, you know, a lot of bass players, we get started on the gig and you're like, okay, read this chart. And you see those changes and you might, it's going quick, and you might go. like uh <laughs> what do i okay raise your hand you know you know you've done that probably right uh so anyways we're here to you know try to get some different ideas and really focus on some note choices so the first thing that we'll want to deal with is um is checking out the the roots okay we, got, we want to get really comfortable with the roots i'm gonna use this today i'm using a slightly different setup i want to be able to hear this so we've got a little spangling happening here Right? So play this along with me. So one, two, one, two, three, go. We're just really trying to get this under our fingers, start warming up. This is this will count as our warm-up today, right? Six, two, five. Now you notice the six is a dominant chord, right? So there's a B natural in that. It's not diatonic, it's not a G minor chord. Not typically. Right? Okay, so that's something you're likely familiar with. The next thing to practice from there, for me, uh, the next thing that I usually talk about first, because we really want to get these roots under our fingers, in our ears, and really understand them, is to think about playing them differently. We, you know, the way we just did it in that previous example is, is but one way to connect the dots. And we're thinking about our strong beats right now, beats one, Three, one, three, one, three. Right, so the bass line sounds like it's cohesive, really outlining the changes, but without a lot of that chromatic half step type of situation that that is very common for you know uh, for bassists as they're just getting into it. So, anyways, we'll get to that more later. Play this with me, okay? This is the roots, the same roots, except we're using the third the three chord right here, which is a really common substitution for the one chord. So we're using the three right here. Let's play this through a few times through, just get really comfortable with it, and then we'll do it without any, any chart, okay? The idea is to, um, is to be able to be flexible in our octave, right? So not always playing this B flat, not always playing this G, not always playing this C, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Let's try with me. So one, two, one, two, three, go. And even as we're doing this, just make sure it's swinging, okay? Now this is a big interval, so I could have planned that better, but here we are. Mm -hmm. Making sense? One, six, two, five, three, six, two, five, and then one. Right? Of course, the, the chord changes move on in a different in a different way um, in the next four bars, and of course there's the bridge. These are just the first four measures of the A section, of each A section. And this is just one way to play it. So let's get right into it. Here is the first, um, the first four measures of when Paul Chambers enters with Miles Davis playing the head. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, so, but Miles just plays the melody, and then Paul enters on the second A. So this is actually the second A of the first chorus where they start. But let's check it out. Just uh, Let's just dissect it a little bit, okay? This is this is Paul Chambers playing this, and we can see he's playing the root three, and then the 
root of the of the sixth chord, right? And then a scale step. Now he's landing on the third of that C minor. A really common thing that bass players uh, tend to do when we just get started with this is to hit all of the roots all of the time, right? So if we hit, this is root every time, and that's fine. It, it, that does the job as long as it's swinging, right? But uh, to, to maybe get next level on it, we want to start thinking about being able to hit these thirds uh, on top of just being really cool with the roots. So that's part of our focus today. I'm talking, let's play this line a couple times through, okay? So here's my spangalang back. This is not Billy Joe, of course. Play along with the record if you want to. It's a lot more, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot faster though, too. So, and if you like this, the transcription is down there below. Let's play it. So one, two, one, two, three, go. Here's the third. Here's a root, root. Let's do it again. So one, two, three, go. Root, third. So, my idea for what we're going to practice today is based directly off of the goal notes that Paul is hitting in this first four bars, and we've got more examples coming too, but this is the, what he was just playing, the root of B flat, the root of G, the third of C minor, the root of F7, D minor, you could make an argument that that's the third of B flat 7 as well, or B flat major as well, um, but then the third of G, C, the root fit there. So let's play this through, okay? Just like we did earlier. So make it feel like a really good halftime feel, uh, and let's get this in our bones for a minute, okay? So one, two, one, two, three, go. Three. That's, and I mean the third of the chord, not the three of the key, right? We can loop this one. So hear this as a melody too, it can really help. So it's almost like a chord tone melody. It is. It's like guiding. You know, it's it's really defining the chord, and then we'll connect the dots from here. Okay, we're good with that. So, what we want to do now is try to find some clever ways to get from uh, from chord to chord, but still hitting the third and not just hitting the root every time. And we have other examples coming up, but bear with me, okay? So if you remember, Paul did this. He played root, third, root, scale step down, so that F7, or the F F major, uh, saying F, and then the third of C minor, chromatically leading up to F7. So you can use, you can use scale steps, and you can also use triad steps. So we want to be really cool with that, of course, the triad of B flat major, it's B flat, D, F, right? So B flat, D, F, and I'm just thinking root third, fifth. Same with G7, G, B, D, C minor, C, E flat, G, then F, F, A, C, D minor, D, F, A. Right? And we've already hit the other ones over here. And of, of course, there are substitutions that are very commonly played here. This is probably the most common first one. The D minor takes, takes, you know, takes place, takes the place often of the one chord. It's a three. They have a lot of common notes, especially in the, um, you know, they have a lot of common notes. It's very diatonic sounding, right? But what I want to do is to think about some different ways and do this with me, okay? We're not going to play the same line likely. If we do, that's really cool. That'd be hip. But let's practice finding our own ways from this, and we'll do it without a metronome first. But let's think just really systematically about what we're doing. So I want to hit the uh, the goal note, in this case the root, the root, the third, the root, etc., and then find either a triad note or a scale note that's going to lead me in the right direction with the least amount of like major jumps if we can. We're trying to keep this pretty, pretty linear and without a lot of huge intervallic skips. So let's take it a step at a time. So if I'm going B flat, I might do A to get me to G. I might play F to get me to E flat. Now I might play G, the, the fifth of C minor, because it encircles that F. Now I'm going down to D, so what makes sense? E flat. Maybe C leading down to B. Maybe the D, so fifth of G. Root, five, root. 
Now you could make the case for doing like half step approaches, which is a very common way to do it as well. But it sounds starts to sound kind of funky the more you do that. You don't want to do that all the time. If I did that, it would be like B flat, G flat, G, D, E flat, E natural, F. And I'm talking about lower approaches, right? D flat, D. And then you would have to double this up, right? Okay, let's think about you know, the one I, one I just did earlier was uh, thinking scale, more scalar. Now let's think only using triad notes, okay? So if I'm coming from B flat, B flat, F is the closest note that I would use to get the G. Now how about a D, the fifth to E flat? How about G again? C, D. Now this is only because we're isolating what we're doing and thinking triads. You could always use the sevenths too. C, B to get to that G. C, oh, D, uh, B, D, C. How about E flat? E flat, F, A, B flat. So let's try it in time. Just loop this around. The only restriction right now, you can do whatever you want. Obviously you're home practice and hopefully you've got your bass out, your sax, sing this along, whatever you're doing. But the only, the only uh, parameter that we're trying to solve, or keep in mind, is to play in time, make it swing, and hit these goal notes. So play whatever you like, but think about whether you're playing a scale degree or maybe a triad degree, and try to make it flow. Let's try it. So one, two, one, two, three, go. E flat, F, D. I can't speak into it, so let's loop it. Try not to do it the same way every time. So even choosing just these goal notes, kind of, it locks us in a lot. That's kind of the point. Oh, I cheated there and played the third. All right, cool. Let's take out, let's take out, uh, or check out the next example. This is Paul Chambers. Again, this is taken right from Olio, uh, from his walking bass line. This is, uh, I believe, the last A section of the first chorus, but it doesn't really matter. Let's play this, and then we'll talk about it, analyze it just a little bit. So again, you notice that, that Paul's always hitting a chord tone. Here we see that he's landing on the seventh. You could also make the case where it's like a delayed resolution to get to this F, right? Uh, and again, you could call this B flat, but let's play it. Play it along with me. So one, two, one, two, three, go. All right, let's do that on game. So one, two, one, two, three, go. much faster but we're taking it down and really trying to dig in and analyze it so what do we have we have this scale step at the beginning here he's going b flat a g now the major third of g7 which leads super well of course to c minor that's the point and he's just walking up c minor well, let me take this this off for just a second now this chromatic note here it's it's forward motion it's also kind of coming from the the dominant bebop scale if you think F7, the bebop scale that would, the, the F7 bebop or the F dominant bebop scale, whatever you want to call it, would be F, E natural, E flat, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. And you can make a case for him using that here. The F dominant bebop scale and the C minor bebop scale, whatever you call it, is literally the same thing, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes for today at least. But... It's also like he's just kind of thinking C minor here and leading towards this. Okay, we get to D minor, D, A, D, I'm sorry. So F, A, D, B natural, C. So he's hitting the third of D minor, the fifth, the fifth of G7, the third of G7. Now it could be said here too, uh, or it's coming to my mind at least that you can play like the B flat major scale over all of this and find some clever ways to use chromaticism. Um, and you could, you could literally just like play like this. Two, three, go.
sounds kind of, it sounds pretty basic, especially at a slower level or a slower tempo. When you get up tempo though, you got a little less time to think about it. So why wouldn't practice this downstairs? You could also take it a measure at a time, thinking just B flat major and then F7, or B flat major and then C minor seven, F7, just to pare down the chords, especially when the tempo's up, you know, it, it can help. Let's play this line through a few times, okay? I didn't give you any count off, did I? My bad. Can't read my mind. Let's do it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Right? And he's likely next going. It's like something Paul would do, a 2 5 into the E flat. But let's take out his goal notes. Now, this is the the root movement melody, that's what I like to call it at least, even if it's an inversion, so we've still got one, six, two, five, three, six, two, five, but he's hitting the root, the root, the third, the root, the seventh, the third of D minor or the fifth of B flat, the fifth of G7, the root of C minor, and then the root of F. Okay, so let's play that, just get that, that in our ears and under our fingers. You ready? One. Two, one, two, three, go. Let's loop it. You could call this B diminished too, right? It's a longer story. Stop saying it, I'm sorry. <laughs> So what I want to do next, of course, is what I just tried to start doing and then I fell down. But that's the idea, we're practicing. So let's turn this now into walking, practice this walking. You could play either uh, either a scale degree or you could play a triad, a triad idea or something from the arpeggio itself. Um, but uh, yeah, try it with me, okay? So one, two, one, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, I was cheating there. It's kind of tricky to do, but I think it's a good practice. It's fun, you know, if you like practicing, especially if you like practicing rhythm changes. So, and again, all we're doing is taking the uh, taking the root movement that Paul is implying with his walking line, not implying, he's playing with his walking line, and taking out beats two and four. Because that's, you know, our first thing that we want to practice again, is getting these root movements, whether you're going to hit, whether you're hearing the root, hearing the third, hearing the fifth, getting all that really cool, and then connecting the dots, right? So, let's try this one out. This is, again, just the first four measures. We're only focusing on the first four measures of all the A sections. Still one six two five three six two five. Let's play this one. One, two, one, two, three, go. Hmm. So we had some bigger intervals in there, right? Like especially right here, this minor six. Hip. It's it's you hear this real five sound, that real five-ish, you know, dominant chord sound right there is what I mean. And then he's using that A again, because that A transfers over from the F chord, the third of F, and then the fifth of D, or the seventh of B flat. But I'm thinking he's implying a D minor here because of that. Let's play it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Pivoting off that D, right? One, two, three, again. played a little skips in there and if you're familiar with the tune you know that it's uh, or the recording that is you know that it's considerably faster and there's a lot less skips that Paul doesn't really do a lot of like uh, ornamentations rhythmic ornamentations that is to this line but uh, 
let's check out this next one. Okay, so this is every other note. Again, still just focusing on beats one and three, and then we're gonna connect the dots, okay? So try it out with me. One, two, three, go. Now, I definitely never would have done that without thinking about it in this way, playing an A again. So he's pivoting around and using that, um, I don't know, it just flows really well. I like it. One, two, one, two, three, go. So let's turn it into a bass line. So using some chromaticism in there, and if this tempo is, is already too bright maybe, or if you're if it's super slow, that's cool. The concept is to practice moving from these, you know, these uh, these different ideas, you know, roots, thirds, but to get away from the and just sit there, I think that's cool. That might be cool. I don't know. I definitely don't know what's cool. We're talking about jazz bass lines here. Right, so we're trying to get away from that, obviously. Going to the transcriptions, going to the recordings, that's the clearest way to do that. Let's check out another one. All right, so this is uh, the fourth example that I have. All right, so already we can see some similarities, and we've already seen some similarities in these lines, just these first four measures again. Again, these are the A sections, right? So we've got root, root, that third, root. That's very familiar from the first one we did. Um, we can call this D minor seven, so root, third, root, root. Let's play this one. One, two, one, two, three, go. And I just hit a B flat at the bottom because that's most likely what would happen for the third. All right, let's do it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. And the idea again, as always, clear attacks, long sustained notes. Listen to the recording, it's very evident. Uh, you know, Paul's sound is just huge on this recording. Go check it out if you don't know it. What if we did, um, you know, I didn't plan for this, but what if we worked on transposing this a little bit to get a different perspective on it, right? So let's not be scared about this. We're, it's all pretty diatonic except for this B natural right here. So let's check this out in B flat and just talk about it a minute while we're doing it. So if we're thinking root, third, six, five, four, let's take that much. Let's move it in C, just, just up a whole step. Try not to use the fingering tricks if you're on electric or whatever. Let's really try to think about it. Uh, so if we're in C, and then let's take it up to this C. So root, third, six, five, four, right? Sharp one, then up a minor third. So what would that be? Let's. So I kind of jumped the gun and I kept doing the whole thing transposed up. But let's take it back in B flat. And if you have trouble with this, you're not alone. This is, you know, it always takes time. If this is old hat to you, take it into B. <laughs> take it into G flat. Okay. I can't hear you. Doesn't matter. So one six. I'm sorry. One three six five four six five. Four, three, two, how about sharp one? Three, two, six, five, seven. So that's a lot of numbers to keep in mind, but you can also start to hear this intervolically. Inverted major third, or down a minor six. Up a fourth, down a whole step, down another whole step, up a major third, down a whole step. But if we can, the best we can do is to hear these lines. 
know, if we get too deep into analyzing them all the time, I mean, analyzation is great, and then practicing them, putting them practically, but if we can hear lines like this, that's, man, that's, that's what's up. Let's see if we can't take this line into F. Let's do it in F. So, F that's on the D string, let's start there. So we've got one, three, six, five, four, three, I'm sorry, six, five, four, three, two, sharp one, three, two, six, five, seven, one, and that'll get us down there, right? Can we do it at tempo? One, not at tempo, at our, at our, our practicing tempo, not the oleo tempo, right? Uh, all right, in F, let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, go. Cool. Can we do A flat? Uh, let's try A flat. I'm gonna totally mess this up on, on camera. That's all right. Um, one, two, one, two, three, go. Try one more time. One, because I just barely made that. So one, two, three, go. Cool. Yeah, rhythm changes in A flat. Had to what's up. It's a uh, Donald Bird tune. Somebody help me out. There's a. I know there's more rhythm changes in A flat. You know, Cottontail in A flat. Duke Ellington tune. There's another one. I'm trying to think of. Da 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 da. Anybody know that tune? What I'm thinking of? Anyways, just babbling. Let's practice. <laughs> so this is the original line with the every other notes taken out. These are all our gold notes, right? And uh, we're gonna get through this one, one more, and then I've got some other practice, practical practice things that we can do. And uh, and we'll check out the comments, okay? So let's play this. Just play it as a two feel. Make it real comfortable. If you can do it to where you stop looking at this, sooner than the sooner the better. The sooner you can internalize this kind of idea, that's a great thing. Let's try it. So one, two, one, two, three, go. Three, sharp one, two, five. Let's loop it. One, six, four, five, three, sharp. Can you do it without looking? Seven, two, five. So one, six, three, four. Sorry, I can't speak and do it. <laughs> so now let's connect the dots. different you know so there I'm starting to add in a little extra rhythmic stuff and feel free to do that of course after all throughout all of this you know we want to practice it as if we might play it and I think this tempo is really lending that too you know what I mean if we were doing it you know at the actual tempo it'd be harder to do that but uh, the better we get at practicing it slow the stronger a chance we have at succeeding at up tempos right you already know so let's check out this last one now this one's a little higher in register not a big deal He's starting, uh, Paul Chambers that is, is starting on the third. And this, this, in this key, the rhythm changes really is, uh, it helps to have the open strings involved, particularly the, the D string and the G string can bridge the gap because we've got the three and six, right? The three happens here and that's all good. Even the, th the three chord, you can use A inside of that three chord as well. Okay, so we think three or that calling that the one chord. What about the six chord? We've got here's the, the fifth of the six chord. There's the root of the six chord. 
and there's the uh, the uh, the fifth of the sixth chord as well, right? So you have options. You get to C minor. You can use this G as a bridge. You know, so these open strings can really help us out. And Paul definitely does that a bunch inside of these uh, inside of this recording, uh, obviously in the transcription, but in you know in the actual recording. Anyways, I'm still talking. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try playing this. Just out of time a little bit because there's a little bit of range things happening here. So how about we're gonna start on D, open D, G, and stay on that same D, C, G, A flat, A natural, B. Here's that open D again. Open G, F, the third of C minor, open G, F, A. So there's a lot, you know, and throughout the transcription, if you like downstairs, there's a link to get uh, more of the transcription, not just the first four A section or the first four measures of the A sections that is, but, uh, and you can also get the worksheets that we're dealing with or that I'm drawing from for this that I draw up. So let's play it at our tempo. And again, we're just doing this at a slower tempo, really thinking about note choice, feel and internalizing the chord changes as they are. There are of course, um, a bunch of alterations that can happen in this, but we want to know this, these chord changes super well, right? Let's start. We'll just loop this a few times through, okay? One, two, one, two, three, go. So this one would be harder to transpose just with those open strings. Good. If we block it off, think about blocking it off this way. Let's play it through a few more times. This is just straight chromaticism right there, or maybe a delayed resolution. My Saturday guided practice folks that are here too, they know about this because we kind of hit this, this last Saturday. If you like these, pra these guided practice sessions, consider joining the base access pass. really likes, Paul really likes hitting the, the third of these C minor chords too because they're right next door. You can use either a, a, a triadic, arpe, a triadic step or chromaticism in there. So that's a really big thing that Paul does a lot of. Um, yeah, so let's look at just breaking that down, okay? So he's hitting the third, or you could say that make a case for this being D minor at this point. We'd have to listen to the chords and what's happening in the melody, but it's pretty much the same. So uh, the third, root, root, third, root, root, third, root. Let's stay at this tempo, our own tempo right now. Play this with me if you're not, all right? I'll know. Got your bass, right? Am I just doing this by myself? I would do it either way. It's all right. Let's connect the dots now. Oh, I played the wrong one, of course. So that's the idea, right? It's something you can take and practice further, uh, taking these uh, transcriptions. It's coming directly from his lines, of course. So it makes sense to me. Let's try this. So this is a little bit more uh, academic. It's coming away from Paul's line specifically. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm trying to practice here now, this is kind of a shift. We're thinking from chord to chord. We're still doing one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five. That's not changing. But what I'd like to do is to focus on uh, kind of like how we, the concept of the octave displacement when we were doing the roots earlier, how you can use octave displacement to change your lines and still have them function the way that you want them to. Here, we're going to play the root on beat one and then the third on beat three. Root, third, root, third, root, third. Let's try that out, okay? 
this is just the first example of this that we're doing. We're going to change it up. You can, of course, use octave displacement. You can use, you know, just there's various ways to do that. And I implore you to explore those, you know. These are just certain parameters that we're putting on a set of chord changes, which is just a really common form. Um, anyways, I'm still talking. Let's try it. So one, two, one, two, three, go. sharp one, which is the third of C, or third of G. It's just really kind of paring it down in this sense, right? But what can we do to fill in the gaps between this? That's where things start to get more interesting, right? We want to be able to hear this, of course. And when we're playing something like this, the people that we're backing up, the soloists, understand that we are implying the chords and trying to be very specific, right? So let's open it up. What do you got? Let's try doing it differently every time. That's, that's some ideas just off the top of my head. I've got a written example here. Let's try this one out and you'll see that it's the same. We're hitting root third, root third, root third, root third. One, two, three, go. The idea right so let's check it out with uh with a little bit of bigger intervals involved okay so now you might say wow that's a big in <laughs> that's a big interval starting from b flat there and then the third down here and it is that's a place where these open strings and using some skips can really come in handy all right so think about it that way perhaps but before we do that let's just let's just play our root movement kind of concept here first in a two feel so one two one two three go and this is just like what we were doing earlier, it's just an octave higher. So this is some of that octave displacement stuff, right? So what can we do inside of this? beat two and it doesn't make sense at all we shouldn't do that <laughs> but you know it's what we got so here's the written line i have prepared for that same root progression type of concept let's play it play it with me see if it makes sense so one two three four that's more what i mean did you do any of this in your lines likely i mean there's definitely not an infin infinite number of options, but to be able to do this on the spot and make it feel good. One more time, here we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's flip that concept real quick. This is perhaps where it gets a little trickier or a little bit, maybe not, I don't know. But we want to be flexible in whether we're hitting thirds roots. You can do the same thing to fifths, of course, fifths, thirds. You can alternate or, um, you know, change this up however you see fit. The idea is just to be, be playing the chords that you mean and be really quick with it too. So here we're doing third, root, third, root, third of D minor, root, third of C minor, root. 
So how can we can we make this work and make it musical and swinging? <sighs> too much, too much. One, two, just the roots. Two, three, go. D, G, E flat, F, F, G, E flat, F. Again. Mm. Now these are some bigger intervals, right? So it's gonna be hard to play linear line inside of this. But if we can use some open string ideas, maybe to bridge the gap. Let's try turning into lines. Try it with me. I already blew it. A little better. It's not easy. Again, chromaticism can really get you out of a lot of binds. Nope, that was wrong. Oh, terrible. That's the idea, right? Let's so I have a written line here. Let's check it out. One, two, one, two, three, go. Here's our last one real, real quick, and then we'll get out of here. Third root. Third root. Play with me. One, two, one, two, three, go. So that's a big octave step, right? Way bigger intervals. Let's just get into it, okay? Sink or swim. Trying to do the same line every time if we can. I say that and I'm doing that, you know. Alright, so here's the line written that I have. And I definitely, um, if it's not something you've done before, write out bass lines. It's, it's a great practice. You can really, you can do it at your own speed and you can more or less transcribe what you're hearing in your ear or try to figure out what sounds good. So writing out bass lines is a great idea and I don't really mean to play them or perform them, but it helps you to think about them in a different way. To think about your lines and actually think about what it is you're playing. Cool. Okay, so that's of course just the first four bars of the A section, right? So that's that's enough, we can get quite a lot of juice just out of that concept that we were talking about just now. So, um, you know, that's some ideas to practice. Of course, you can alter the tempo that you're doing, you can alter the changes, alter the key, of course, that you're doing. Um, but some, those are some of the ideas, using triads, the notes inside of the triads from each chord, <clears throat> excuse me, and then using the scale ideas and mixing and matching them. Transcribing is a great, great way to get a bunch of ideas too, as you already know. So. Go to Paul Chambers, go to anybody that you like. There's a million great bassists out there, great recorded uh, examples of people playing on rhythm changes. But uh, make sure you go to the good ones. Let's hop, help, head on over to the comment section real quick and see what folks had to say. So, yeah. I'm always happy to see people here practicing. Really appreciate it. Hanging out. Yep, I see my buddy Rick Hicks. Chris is here, Alessandro. Oh, okay. Justin Lamar. My brain hurts, laugh out loud, and this is basic. Bro, my brain hurts thinking about this stuff too. But when we, <laughs> it honestly does. Um, especially when you start putting these parameters on it. You know what I mean? Uh, getting away from, you know, like the basic. It, it is basic for sure. But when we talk about details and stuff like that, it can really be a thing. All right, my camera's trying to go out of focus again. Get back there. Okay, better. 
So, but yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it's, it's a trick. Just keep, just keep at it, man. I'd love to hear you play it. Uh, Dudu Fada is like, no, man, you're cool. Okay. Yeah. Earlier I was saying I'm, I'm not cool. Um, eh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Playing stand up bass. Take some chops. There you go. Speaking of chops here, I got to show y'all. Y'all don't want to see it, but I'm going to show you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> the blister is hanging in there. Hasn't broken yet. Okay. Hey, I knew my buddy Dave was going to have something for me here. Hey, Dave. I was asking about some uh, rhythm changes in different keys. Now that's, yeah, Whale by Bud Powell. Yeah, definitely. That's a good one. Um, there's, there's a lot of great examples um, uh, that aren't coming to my brain as I bring it up loud, out loud, you know. But uh, does anybody know the one that I was, let me peek ahead. Da, 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 da. It's literally just that. Uh, I think it's Donald Byrd, but I am blanking on it. So, Okay. Oh, to be a musician takes 10% talent and 90% work. So it said, yeah, right on. Oh, my buddy, Mr. Peter Martin, the boss man. What's up, Peter? Thanks for joining us. Practicing your bass lines with us, yeah? <laughs> uh, bellicose hyperbole. Oh, I like that. I like your, I like your handle there. Peter's giving, giving Peter a thumbs up. Yeah. So, oh, here we got some other examples of rhythm in different keys, and Dave is on it. Thank you, Dave. Rhythm in C, an Oscar for Treadwell, Charlie Parker. Dope. Excellent. Very cool. Let's shed some rhythm changes in C for sure, right? Oh, man. Has anybody been on the gig where they just, they call rhythm changes in B? It might have been a minute since that, that comes up. I don't think they do that in jam sessions anymore. Do we do that anymore? Is that okay to do? Hi, Bob. I'm an intermediate level bass player. Hey, what's up, Tom? And I find your lessons Goldilocks, just right. <laughs> That's really cool. Thanks, Tom. That's, uh, I like that comment. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I want to start using that. I find it just Goldilocks. Yeah, so happy practicing. I love that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Edelson, come on now. Oh, man. Okay, can we speak about the next four bars, but next year? All right, yeah. The next four bars, there's a lot of depth that can go into the next four bars for sure. Yeah, but I, I feel you, man. There's so much you can get out of even these smaller forms, right? So I'm glad I'm not alone in that, you know? There's a there's a whole lot that we can do with this, a whole lot. We're just kind of scratching the surface. Um, all right, Dane, thanks, Bob. Hey, thanks for being here, Dane, that's very cool. Okay, what do we got here? Dave Shepard, thanks for transcribing and composing some cool lines, Bob. Aw, thanks, Dave. Thanks for being here, I appreciate it. Thanks for in your input, as, as always. I hope we get to talk in person, hang hang in real life and talk talk some bass someday. That would be fun, right? Cool. But yeah, uh, and Dave is reminding me too that downstairs we've got a link to uh, a transcription that I've done of Paul Chambers on Olio from Relaxin. You should for sure check out that album if you don't already know it. Just to, ah, it'll make you smile. <laughs> Listen with somebody else too, it'll make you, yeah, just lose it. All right, Frederico, great session. Hey, thanks, Frederico. Thanks for being here. Okay, I'll make sure I don't. Uh, Denver, Colorado loves you. Hey, I really like Denver, Colorado. Yeah, Dazzle is great. It's been a minute since I've been to Dazzle. And I love the mountains. Man, I love the mountains there. Justin Lamar, thanks, Bob. Hey, what's up, Justin? Yes. Yeah, keep, yeah, I feel you. I'm glad you hung on. What do we have here? Okay, I'm going to make sure I can do this. Open studio. Already checked spam. Nothing there either. Either. Also tried. Oh, okay. Andrew, you seeing this? You've already seen this one, yeah? A little back, back uh, behind the scenes. Okay, we've got a trombonist here. A trombone slash bass trombone player. Ooh, nice. Bass trombone. I'm trombone in general, but what's up, Calvin? Um, and this is a major help in rhythm, especially the different keys. Right on. Yeah, perhaps in the future. So this is, for me, this is just uh, part one. I wanted to get to the next four bars and then check out the bridge. But hitting these other keys, too. Yeah, that's crucial. We didn't hit that so much today. Um, for whatever reason, that just wasn't the focus as much. But yeah, take any of these lines and any of these concepts into the other keys, and boom, you're right. It can happen really quick. You take it into you know D, start playing rhythm changes in D, and uh, you'll start thinking about B flat in a different way, right? So yeah, I feel you, Cal Calvin. Uh, will blisters ever go away? Yeah, they will. They will. But I think we got to get them first, right? You got some blisters going on. I do, and I usually don't because I've been playing for a long time, and my calluses are usually built up. But with the you know the pandemic going on and everything, 
I hit the other day and was playing, you know, I was digging in too hard, you know, and uh, got some blisters, but they're not popping because I have uh, calluses over them. Anyways, you don't want to hear about that. Peter shreds on keys. Yes, he does. Bellicose hyperbole is not being hyperbolic. Are you? He's totally, yeah. I mean, if you don't know Peter Martin, you need to check, check out some Peter Martin. He's fantastic. And there's great lessons, of course. If you don't already know, check out the other videos over at Open Studio. You know, subscribe to the channel here. Check out the other videos that we've got going on. If you like, um, if you like um, what we do here with the Building Blocks of Bass, you can check out the previous, previous sessions that we've done too. So yeah, a lot of good stuff going on. And we really love seeing all the bass players here too. Kurt Morrow. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Kurt Morrow. Excellent lesson, Bob. Thanks. Paul Chambers is a great person to study. I might also suggest bassists to check out Ron Carter. Yeah, absolutely. Played in the second great Miles Davis quintet. Yes, good suggestion. Ron is our man too. I mean, that's we checked out a little bit of Ron when we were getting into with Ruben, the minor two fives. We did some examples from him. Uh, and I've got some other ones coming up. Yeah, I've got some good uh, some other good transcriptions that we'll study and check out and really, really try to get in there. All right, Dave. Rhythm and B equals brutality. <laughs> absolutely. All day. That's yeah, that's a tough one. I'm not about to do that here. I'm not about to play in, in B. So <laughs> cool. Um, okay. Andrew, we got somebody who don't see the transcription link. We can help him out, I'm sure. Um, yes, and this is good too. Absolutely, Kurt Morrow. Mr. Carter has some great books out. He absolutely does. Behind the Changes, check these out. First four bars. Yeah, exactly. So uh, some different chord substitutions. But I said I wasn't gonna get, we weren't going to get into that, right? <laughs> There's so much so much you can do. But that's a great suggestion there. I'm sure Mr. Mr. Carter appreciates that. Okay. All right. And we've got some other ones. Patrick. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, Patrick. Good to see you. You're welcome, man. Glad you're here. Happy practicing. Okay. Let's see what's happening. Milo. Hey, Bob. Super helpful. Maybe this is a little unrelated to this lesson, but have you done much piano playing to help with hearing, harmony, learning standards better? That's a great question. And I think it's totally pertinent to what we're doing here. Yes. I, I've, I've been studying piano not super seriously. I wouldn't play a gig on it or sit in a jam session even. But yeah, getting on the piano and, you know, understanding and hearing what we do kind of as bass players in the left hand, that's that's a big thing. But to be able to hear those, the harmony that's above it and play melodies on top, yeah, that's I think that's one of the most helpful things we can do as bass players. And that's for sure something that, uh, that will help your ears. And it's great for composing as well. So... Um, yeah, there's there's uh, if you've checked out the Christian McBride course, um, your sound is your signature. He gets on the piano and really shreds some some, some piano there too. That's worth checking out, uh, but just some great chords. So yeah, great comment, and that's 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 where it's at. All right, Kurt's on here. Yeah, exactly. No, there's I mean, so many good substitutions. Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right, Bellicos, learn your scales. Yes, sir. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm gonna start practicing. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. That's yeah, gotta learn our scales to get to this point. So, anyways, always fun here at the Building Blocks of Bass. Thanks for joining me on this session today.